Hey everybody, today's Dorico video is a bit of a niche one, but it's about making graphic slices out of your scores and your examples. So if you're creating an exercise for your classroom, you're doing a presentation, or you're just looking to grab just a little segment of the music to put into an email or text message, this is a great tool that's built into Dorico, and it's really a huge time saver. If you're like me and you used to do these in Finale, this will blow you away. So here we go with some graphic slices. So to begin with, we have a big band chart of mine titled Studio Time. And what I'm going to be showing you here is how you can export little chunks of the music as a graphic. So let's say you're creating a Word document and you want to insert some musical examples. Well, this is a perfect way of doing it because you can pre-format the example you're looking for, type it out, and then voila, you can import it into your document like any other image. Now, Dorico has a couple of great features. One is you can export it in many different file formats like PDF, SVG, PNG, and TIFF, but you can also export it with a transparent background, which means when you export the file, you're literally going to get a file that has just the music as if you took the page away from it. And I know for some people that's not a big deal because if you're putting it on a white background in a Word document, that's fine. But if you're putting it in any other situation where you want to see just the music and nothing else, it's such a huge time saver. So here we go with the graphic slices. So the first thing we're going to do is go into the engrave menu. And on the engrave menu, you'll see we have all of the tools about formatting our page, but down here on the bottom, we have this option for graphic slice. Now, when I discovered this, I was so excited because it is a super powerful tool. When you click on the tab, you're presented with a window, and this will populate with all the different slices we create, and we have the options for file formatting. So let's go ahead and create a for our first slice. So when you click create a slice, you'll see that not a whole lot happens, except for our mouse pointer becomes this little cross. And the little crosshair is how we're going to select the document. So let's say in the first one, we're looking to do just the first alto part for this couple of measures. Now, I made my box too big, so I can go back and make it smaller if I wanted just the first alto part, or I can extend it down to grab that second alto part. Maybe I want a little less white space on the top, now, once it appears in your slice window over here, you can rename it. And the renaming is important because this is going to be the file name that it's going to be when you save it. I'm going to go ahead and rename it Alto 1 plus 2. Now, when we click on it, we're presented with many different options. We can choose the file format, PDF, PNG, SVG, and TIFF. And we can also choose mono versus color and the resolution. Now for PDF, you don't get any other options because PDF by default is going to have a white background. PDF is a great format if say we wanted to do like a whole page and we we're going to print it, but it's not great if we're going to import it into another document because it's sort of a strange format when it's not like a full page. So let's go ahead and choose ping. Now a ping document is a compressed image format that's really popular and it's used in a ton of different programs on the internet and a bunch of different things. So you're probably gonna be safe using that if you choose that for your option. When you choose mono, you don't get any options. It's just gonna export it. But if you leave it on color, one of the great things is you can choose the transparent background option, which means it's gonna remove that white space behind the music, which I find to be so handy. We also need to edit the resolution. Now, it might seem kind of silly because you think, oh, it looks great on the screen. But in reality, the, the image we're creating is actually relatively small. And so we really need to blow it up pretty darn big so that when we put it in a Word document and print it, it'll come out really high resolution. So you're probably gonna wanna do 600, maybe even 1200. Now, ping is a pretty good format for compression, so it'll be relatively small, but we definitely wanna get a higher resolution so when we print it, it looks awesome. Now down here you have your destination folder. Dorico will default 
to the folder where you uh, have your document saved. But in this case, I'm gonna choose a different folder. So I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna choose a different folder where I'm gonna place all of these. Okay, now that I've made my first slice, one of the powerful parts of this tool is we can go ahead and create another slice and we can export them all at the same time and even if they have different settings. So we can have one as a PDF, one as a ping, one as a TIFF, and so it's really great. So let's go ahead and make another one, and this time we're gonna make it the SVG format. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna highlight this rhythm section chunk, and this time I'm gonna go ahead and change the file format to SVG, and I'm gonna leave it with that color, and I'm gonna go ahead and keep it in that same folder. And then let's say I wanna come over here and grab this little chunk and I'm going to highlight it and I'm gonna grab it and let's export this one as a TIFF. So maybe I'm gonna call this one trombone and then I'm gonna reformat it to TIFF. And again, I'm presented with the transparent background and I'm gonna go ahead and kick it up to 1200 DPI. And then our slice two which is the rhythm section. I'm gonna go ahead and call that one rhythm section. And I'm gonna make sure it's on my SVG. So now when I hit export, it's gonna actually export these into my folder all at once. And so you could make a giant list of these little clips for all the little pieces you need and then export them all at once, which is super handy. Now, when you're looking in Dorico and you wanna go back and forth between your slices, do note that you can't actually click on them over here and go directly to the slice, but it is nice that it'll tell you what page number it's on. And so that way we can say, oh, this one's on page four, and we can know where to go to find it. But when you do click on it, it does highlight it in your document, so you know which one you're working with. Okay, now let me show you another way that you can export a chunk of your document if you're looking to say use a whole page, for example. You could do this through the slice, but the slice is really better for little pieces. If you're looking for an entire page, this is another way to do it that's a little more efficient. So if we go under the print tab, and let's say we wanna do the first alto part, we can go over to the graphics over here and we're presented with the same options we had in the previous menu, where we can choose from ping, XVG, and TIFF. And because I'm gonna put this page of music into another program, I'm gonna go ahead and choose the PNG. Now do note that because we're doing it in a ping, it's gonna make it pretty big, but we still need to upsize it a little bit or else it's really not gonna print super well. I'm gonna go ahead and try it at the 1200 DPI and see how big the file is. But again, if you're putting it in a Word document, you really don't want it to be too terribly large. Now in this option, you do have um, options for where you're gonna save it. Again, it's gonna default to the place um, inside of your document folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-choose the, the folder where I've been saving things. And then you have this file name option where you can click on this and it's going to give you all of these options for naming your file. Now you can see down here uh, under the file name recipe, I've used a bunch of these pre-formatted um, things with their default separator. So I did this dollar sign N, which was layout number, and the number is the score order. So if you're doing the entire document to PDF, for example, this way it ensures that the lead alto part would be one and so on and so forth. And then you're going to have the name, the layout name, which is that um, L. And then I have the title of the piece, which is the T, project title. And then I have the page. Now, because I'm only exporting one page, this is kind of handy. So I went ahead and left that engaged there. And so now when it exports, it's going to export it with this formula. And again, if I exported multiple pages or if I exported multiple documents, they would all be formatted in the same way. From here, you can go down, and there is this section under job title where you can do spreads, 
two pages on one page and booklet form. But this is not real normal because most printers can't handle that kind of thing. So this is not a real uh, common thing that I use. I most of the time leave it on normal. But it is really nice that we can go down here under pages and I can choose different things. Right now it's set to one, so I only have one page being exported. I could do the hyphen two, which would give me page one through page two. And I can also use a comma separator, which would allow me to export page one and page three. So if you wanted to do a couple of random pages, that's the way you can do it. But in this case, I just wanna do page one. Now down here under annotations, you can add some extra things like say if you want to put the date and time on the document on the bottom there, or if you wanted to do a watermark, these would all be available to you. But in this case, I'm not looking for any of those things. So again, I'm going to set it to color. I'm going to set it to my transparent background, and I'm going to go ahead and export my document. All right, now that I've exported the documents, when I go into my folder, you can see I've created the slices that I pre-named in those different file formats. And then I also have the, p the ping of that entire page that I exported. And so if we click through them, you can see this is a really high quality image. However, you might notice something. Take a look at that. The number 20 has a white background behind it, and that's because in Dorico, those me uh, measure marker numbers actually have their own backgrounds. So in this case, it's not fully transparent. And so if you wanted to export a page and have it be fully transparent, you'd have to go in and edit those measure markers. And so that's just a little extra thing to keep in mind when you're doing this and you're exporting any part of this and you want that transparency. If we go to the ping, you can see it's 84 kilobytes, which is not too bad. It's also a pretty small chunk of music, but look how big it is. And that means when I shrink it down to put it on my page, it'll be really crisp, really high resolution. Now the SVG format is not going to preview very well on the Mac because it's a format that's meant for graphic design and it needs to be rasterized. So it's really not gonna look that great, but trust me, if you brought it into a, a program like Illustrator, you could blow it up infinitely to any size. So if you were creating a t-shirt logo or something really large, that's the format for you. And then finally, we have the TIFF format. Now TIFF is un compressed graphics. Now, if we did a whole page of TIFF, it would be really big and take a lot of computer resources. But in this case, it's a fairly small file, but you can see compared to the compressed ping, it is double the size. So it is definitely the right move to use the pings. But remember, if you're gonna put them in a print document, they need to be a pretty darn high resolution or else it's really not gonna fit very well. Hey everybody, there's one last thing I forgot to mention about the slices that's pretty darn important, which is the slices are fixed on the page and on the position on the page, not to the measure. What does that mean? Well, if you change your document after you've made your slices, the slice is going to stay in the same place on the page, but the music is going to move. So if I was to take this measure here and I was to move it to the previous system, you're gonna see that my slice stayed in the same place and now it's highlighting a different section of the music. And you can see the one over here on page four now is not um, covering up the melody the way it used to. So it's really important that if you are going to change the document, you'll have to re-edit your slices. So make sure you wait till the very end to do those slices or else you're gonna have to do a lot of hand redoing. So they're really, really great, but that's a little caveat. The other little caveat is, as of right now, with those measure numbers that I showed you in the PDF document, um, the only real way to kind of move them out of the way and get rid of that background is to take away the enclosure around them. So if I go under the engraving tab, I can come down here to no enclosures under rehearsal marks, and that will make it so when I export the PDF, they'll no longer have that 
problem where the um, background is white behind those rehearsal markers. So unfortunately, that's kind of the workaround you're going to have to deal with at this time if you truly need a fully transparent document. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the video. If you're enjoying it, please again like and subscribe the channel. It really helps me out. And let me know if there's something you're looking for. I really enjoy doing these Dorico videos, but I also like talking about saxophone equipment, music, and just about anything else that you can think of. So again, like and subscribe. Let me know what you're looking for and have a great weekend.